Uh, this is Jeff Carroll, Sci-Fi Express Lane. I'm here to express myself sci-fiingly, <laughs> and um, really want to talk about uh, the, the the graduation in era in Black Sci-Fi. Um, you know, uh, this new era that we're in, where uh, there's more Black Sci-Fi writers than I can um, mention, and not just going to say the ones in comics or books. There's, there's black sci-fi writers in film as well and um, we're all over the place but I um, just wanted to reflect a little bit on where we came from in a different era um, or eras that came ahead of us right um, we all know that uh, Samuel Delaney may be one of the first black people to be embraced um, in the science fiction community he's a part of that big golden era um although we have black people that wrote science fiction before him he's not the first or black people yeah of course black people that wrote science fiction before him you know and um he uh gave way to octavia butler then charles saunders came then stephen barnes and Otto hopkins may get the order wrong they'll they'll definitely correct me but that's the whole era and then uh tony morrison and t i redo and then of course that caps off like that major era, era, you know, and then we'll spark it with this big um, African uh, American fantasy science fiction convention that went on in um, Atlanta, right? And then you'll have the LA Bankses, right? Um, and then, of course, then the era that precedes that is, you know, me and Milt Jones, uh, Milton Davis and, um, and a host of other black science fiction writers, you know, uh, I started in 2010, right, um, Doug Angel, it's, it's out there, right, and um, 2012, they had the state of black science fiction, and that was held in Atlanta, at a Dragon Con convention, it was a panel, and it kind of brought everybody together that probably had been inspired by Octavia Butler, um, Stephen Barnes, you know, any of those predecessors, right? Um, I was inspired by Stephen Barnes and L.A. Banks. That's no, you know, those are the two people. Street Lethal and the Linden series of, um, of, of her, the Vampire Huntress. Um, but yeah, so those are the things that, you know, kind of kind of uh, put together and I was reading um, in Dark Matter an essay that uh, Samuel um, Delaney wrote and another one by Charles Saunders and they both gave different testimonies of experiences in the pre-black science fiction era right we say pre-black science fiction um, because they were just black science fiction writers um, black science fiction started coming out in the 2000s as a subgenre group. Um, and uh, Charles Saunders wrote in his essay um, the importance of black people to read science fiction. And um, he outlined a bunch of books that were written uh, by black writers and um, mostly white writers that were trying to, you know, be diverse in their, in their um, I guess, in their messages. But uh, many of them got it wrong. Uh, one in particular was a book called um, Future Earths. And Future Earths was like if uh, Africa had terraformed and inhabited a planetary system. And they took all the wicked um, aspects of, of, of Africa. Uh, they had an Idi Amin type dictator. They had you know, wicked dictators, right? They had poverty. They had clitoris mutilation. They didn't have not one Kemet um, um, set up. You know, they didn't have a Nelson Mandela planet. None of that, but it was just like the worst that Africa could could could, could offer. And um, Charles Sanders is, 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 is probably inferring in, you know, in his last page of the essay, he talks about, you know, that's why black people need to read science fiction, and they also need to write it, and um, 
he was inferring that just us reading it, we will police it. He mentions, you know, um, Farnham Freehold and some of the other ones that were um, what he felt um, areas of concern um, for uh, racial discussion. And then, um, what do you call it, uh, Charles Saunders, he wrote a kind of firsthand testimonies. He was, you know, probably one of the first black writers to be accepted or included in the main discussion of, 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 of science fiction as a black person. And he was um, part of that golden era. Him and Octavia Butler were at the same time. However, he wrote like cyberpunk. He wrote futuristic scenarios, you know, um, influenced by Logan's Run and stuff. And, or not influenced, but similar to like Logan's Run and things of that time. And he said that, you know, Octavia, you know what she wrote? She wrote paranormal stuff. She wrote um, supernatural things. And he said, you know, many times they were on panels together or doing signings together. And it just felt strange because there was a cyberpunk panel. He wasn't on that. Um, and they had about 40-something authors. And all of a sudden, the two black, the only two black people that are there don't write anything similar to each other are doing signings together and it just felt like it was um, contrived. Now I know for me, I don't mind being on black sci-fi panels, right? I have no problem being next to people who write um, different things than I write. However, it's very hard because I write, I have now, I've written just about everything. I even got a dragon in there in my um, comic book series so um, it's hard because I could speak to every subgenre of, of sci-fi however you know some people that has a problem they have a problem with that um, and I can understand that um, but yeah he gave like you know first-hand account of the reaction to people and in his um, uh, uh, essay which is um, I, I'm going to say entitled um, racism in science fiction. Um, he talked about the fear of the black pen, right? The fear uh, that these white writers and, and science fiction editors had of a black person's uh, story. And, you know, are there going to be any black, any white people in there? Are you going to kill us all? That type of stuff was not something you joked about because they really believed it. They really feared what we would write. They really feared our stories. That's crazy. It's laughable now because we see what we would write, right? And many of us, in really killing any white people, we may kill some some racist, some clans people, but I have yet to read a book where it talks about a black and white race war written by a black person or white extermination written by a black person. If anything, we know who we are going after. We may go after the Klan, and that's it. We ain't going after white people. That's stupid. Um, so, you know, we may talk about oppression and stuff like that and breaking our chains and set our story in slavery, but shoot, everybody in slavery could get it. You know what I'm saying? At any point, you know, unless you got somebody hiding in your basement and you trying to, you know, underground railroad them to freedom, you kind of was the problem. So you could get it, you know, as far as I'm concerned. Um, even in the North, when you sat back and allowed it to happen, yo, know, you could still get it. So um, I don't have no problem with, with those type of stories. But yeah, if you want to go back and do a nigga Charlie, yo, let's do it. Um, what's the other thing? Um, Walter Mosley, right? Now, Walter Mosley jumps in the scene in the 90s, right? And um, his essay was really inspiring, you know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna post it. I don't know if there's a link for it online, but um, I took some screenshots and I want people to see it. So uh, somewhere this week, if not today, tomorrow, I will post it. And um, what he was really talking about was his experience um, talking to others and being in audiences and being on stage. He said he, he recounts when he um, said he was going to write a science fiction book, how much applause he received. 
Um, he also just predicted the era that we're in now. In the late 90s, early 2000s, he wrote this essay um, and he predicted, he said, you know, when I come back to this convention or, you know, to this subject, there's going to be tens of tens of, of black writers, more than we can count. And he's correct, because right now there's more black writers of science fiction than I can count. I can't even name them all. Um, I just found a new anthology with some writers in it that I never even I never even um, heard of the anthology. So, um, and that's that's you know that's pretty good. Um, it's interesting. I don't know if it's compiled by black editor or not, and if the stories are challenged to be progressive. But needless to say, they wrote the story, and it is what it is. Um, so I don't know. I mean, to, to this contemporary era, right? Um, uh, black science fiction is now breaking up. It is um, now merging into the subgenres that kind of they started as. You know, like I write post-apocalypse. I have a a military sci-fi story and yes I'm they're all black characters but now they're we recognize the subgenres that they're in and black people will do it and of course vampires and the paranormal were very dominant and we have tons of black writers there but now we are having military sci-fi stories more space stories um, I think this next era if I was to make a Walter Mosley prediction I think this next era for black science fiction is to round out, of course, all of the subgenres, but to now move into a golden era of black thinking. When I say thinking, I'm thinking of the big questions. We're going to start taking more on more of the big questions. Some of us do, and even some of my stories do, and probably indirectly, you know, but I think we will more... Uh, directly approach, you know, alien invasion question, right? Um, um, uh, technology, some type of technology. We may address robots, right? Um, question, how's that going to impact? Like, what if, you know, we're going to have those more speculative, meaty uh, things where we won't just be so aesthetical, right? Um, we will be delving in to the meat. And some of us already do, but I think um, nothing, you know, nothing really has, has, has broken out. Um, I think uh, um, my Harlem Shake series is one of those where I attempt to do that. Um, but I think uh, some star maps, uh, uh, gods or something, this, can't remember, it's a black science fiction writer. Um, who's already in development, um, probably be the next Matrix lady. She has uh, um, the God Maps or something, I think is the name of it. Um, that may be one of the next ones. I know um, William Hitachi out of, I think it's Chicago, he has one um, where black people um, live on the moon. Um, and that's a series I said, I think he said he's gotten picked up as well. So there's some stuff coming down the pike. Um, my uh, Cyber uh, Funk Streets was already screenplayed, not picked up yet, but um, it's making a lot of noise and knows some serious questions about the future of sex. So I think that will be where we go. I think, you know, just the fun uh, aspect of science fiction and story writing is good, but I think we're going to move past that. We will continue writing in the sub genres. But I think we're going to start um, taking on these bigger questions. And I think that will open us up to a really golden era of black sci-fi. Because we will, you know, as a comet hits Earth, what is the black answer to that? What would be a response that a black person would write to that? How would the Earth respond? How would they see the Western countries? How would they see the Eastern countries? How would Africa respond? How would America respond? We need to have all of those projections and predictions in a black person's, um, um, out of a black person's mind. My Harlem Shake is still very Harlemish, 
So it doesn't really talk about the world catastrophe of a um, 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 post-apocalyptic natural event or a post-apocalyptic causing natural event. Um, but it's a start, you know, and I'm still going through the series, so you'll see. But anyway, um, like, subscribe, comment, um, and yeah, man, it's good. Let's knock it out. Um, Sci-Fi Express Lane, Jeff Carroll.